What's up, guys? Welcome back to Country Bunkers Trains. Hope you're doing good. Hope all is well. I was working on putting this week's video together, you know, pondering what we should do, and I realized something. A little over a year ago, we did a quick unboxing video on one of the engines here, the layout. However, we have yet to actually take a quick look or a quick peek at that engine. I figure it's high time we fix that and take a quick look at one of the beautiful queens here on the layout. Today I figured we'd finally take a quick peek at this beautiful and simply stunning MTH Premier Southern Pacific Daylight GS4 steam engine. I tell you what a looker. This is definitely a bucket list engine for me. This is one that I've wanted for quite a while and I'm absolutely tickled to finally have one. And as I say, I can't believe it's already been over a year since I've picked it up. MTH has offered the GS4 Daylight several times throughout the last 20 to 30 years in multiple different variations, everything from the Rail King line all the way up to the Premier line, coming equipped with original Proto Sound or Proto Sound 1 all the way up to Proto Sound 3, which is what we have here. This particular model was advertised in the 2013 Volume 1 catalog and delivered in March of 2014. This particular model features a die-cast metal boiler and tender body, die-cast metal chassis, authentic paint scheme, metal wheels and axles, a constant voltage headlight, die-cast truck sides, remote control protocoupler on the rear on the tender, engineer and fireman figures in the cab, operating firebox glow, metal handrails and decorative bell along with a decorative metal whistle, lighted cab interior, operating tender backup light, speed control, synchronized fan-driven smoke system, the proto smoke system, precision flywheel equipped motor, operating marker lights, and as mentioned, this model sports Proto Sound 3, able to run in two rail and three rail operation. This engine measures 29 inches long and comes with a minimum recommended curve of 054. Now I can definitely vouch for the minimum recommended curve of 054 for this engine. This engine really is rather large and requires these larger radius curves in order to operate. I will say if absolutely needed or absolutely necessary, it can handle a section or two of 042 curves if absolutely needed. For instance, on our innermost loop here, I have two 042 switches back to back that lead off into our sidings. Amazingly, this big behemoth will squeeze through these switches with no issue to get to these sidings. But anything more than that, then yeah, it starts to derail itself, and it's not a happy camper. It definitely will not handle a loop or half of a loop of 042 curves. It just, it won't have it. To be completely honest with you, this engine is the most picky engine I have, or one of the most picky, when it comes to the curves that it runs on. However, we'll get to that here in just a moment. Like I was saying, this was definitely one of those bucket list engines for me. One of those I have to have it someday. Growing up, one of my friends had one of these, and I was always in awe by this engine. I mean, it's just a gorgeous engine. At the time that I purchased this one, the Lionel Vision Line GS series engines were coming out, and that lit the fire all that much more. But I really didn't want to spend 2500 bucks on one of these. That made this one seem like all that much more of a bargain, which even to this day I still feel the same way. When the opportunity came to, to get this engine, I absolutely jumped on it. It was kind of like the perfect storm, or I guess I should say the perfect timing when I did buy this engine. I purchased this shortly after MTH had made their announcement of possibly closing or being for sale, and at that time people were a little cautious, or a little leery I guess I should say, of maybe purchasing MTH products, and prices hadn't started to rise quite near to the effect that they have nowadays. And at the time, I thought I really got somewhat a good deal on this engine. By today's standards, I feel like I got a screaming deal on this engine. <laughs> I think what helped it even more, this engine came from trains on an eBay auction, and in that auction, they used a stock photograph of the engine, like a catalog image. They didn't post an actual image of the engine. So I kind of took a gamble when I purchased this, but it absolutely paid off. I want to say at the time, I picked this engine up 
for like 750 bucks with shipping and taxes and everything. I was like right over 800 bucks. I couldn't shake a stick at that. And by today's standards, ooh, yeah, I'd say that is quite the deal, at least in my book. I mean, hell, the original Proto Sound or Proto Sound 1 engines nowadays are almost commanding their original MSRP value. I'm sorry, but I think that's a, a tiny bit crazy. But that's just me. Now, of course, that's not to say that, that, that that's not a good chunk of change. <laughs> Believe me, that's a pretty good dent in the wallet, at least by my opinion. However, when you do think about it, these engines are kind of in the same class, such as the Norfolk and Western Jays. These engines are always really popular when they come out, and they usually sell out rather quickly. The stores can't hold on to them for that long. And it's kind of the same thing when these things pop up on the secondary market. These always command a pretty penny, and they always usually sell rather fast without any issue. So like I say, when you think about it, I think that's still a pretty good screaming deal, especially by today's standards. As beautiful as this engine is, and as tickled as I am to have it, I will admit that this is probably my most temperamental current MTH engine. I haven't had any catastrophic failures or really any big issues with it, just a lot of really small goofy things happening with it that I've never experienced with any of my other MTH engines. Just stuff that I'm not used to, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, like I say, just a lot of little goofy things. This engine, after I received it, it ran fine. It wasn't anything to do when it originally arrived. However, over time, this developed, this engine developed quite the grounding issue. One of the grounding wires came loose. The three rail and two rail switch in the tender uh, shorted out and became bad. As well as the tether itself went bad. And like I say, this thing just became a bear to ground out. It might not sound like that big of an issue, but with this engine having the three rail and two rail capability through that switch, it made it quite the bear to figure out what was going on with it. It had me and my repairman, Mike, kind of banging our heads against the wall for quite a while trying to fix it. And like I say, it ended up being multiple things. And along with that, a couple other little goofy things. This engine has an eternal squeak that you just can't get rid of. You can oil this thing until you're blue in the face, and it'll still squeak going down the tracks. Another really goofy oddity about this engine, this engine is its happiest when it's running on its minimum recommended curve of 054 curves. This engine loves 054 curves. It has no problems or really any incident running on 072 curves, which is what it's on currently, but where it gets really, really weird, this outer loop here on the layout is constructed out of 081 curves, you would think everything would love this diameter curve. I mean, it's larger than any of the minimum recommended curves for any of the engines here. But this thing derails itself on this 081. I did a video uh, showing this a little while back, and I actually had quite a few people come out of the woodwork and state they had the same type of issue. Not necessarily with this exact engine, but similar engines and just having the same exact issue. And I think we all came to kind of the same conclusion or at least they did as they did their homework. On this particular engine, the front wheel sets and rear wheel sets are flanged to keep it on the tracks. However, the inner two wheel sets are blind drivers, meaning they don't have flanges on them. This is what enables it to run on the tighter 054 curves. But this also seems to be a curse at the same time. And this is what causes the engine to derail itself on these wider curves. It does the exact opposite of running on, a, let's say, a tighter curve. On a curve that's too tight, the engine will pop out and go towards the outside of the track. Whereas this engine on this 081 will actually climb the center and take itself off towards the center. Like I say, it really doesn't make any much sense. But a lot of people have had this issue. I'm not alone. But yeah, like I say, just, just really goofy. Stuff you wouldn't expect. Another, for instance... On this inner loop here, we have a Berkshire. Uh, not really a small engine, not really a huge engine either, but it does share the same recommended curve, or minimum recommended curve of 054. Here on the upper loop, uh, on the layout, in this back corner over here, we have an S-curve to clear the shelving. That Berkshire, every time it goes through that S-curve, it derails itself, it can't handle it. So it's not allowed up on the top loop. <laughs> 
but this daylight that's quite a bit bigger will blow right through that S-curve without issue. It's just really weird. It just loves 054 curves. Another thing this engine does not like, it does not like going through switches or insulated track. It loses its ground really easily. So it, for instance, it can't run over, I can't run it on the inner loop here. Because like I say, it just doesn't like going over the switches. And we have an insulated section back there for the uh, crossing gate. But again, it's really not that big of a deal. It's got several other places here on the layout to run. Shortly after picking the engine up, I wanted to pick up some passenger cars to go along with it. But as usual, I'm pretty late to the party. <laughs> so I could not easily find a complete matching set to go with the engine. However, I'm quite happy with the turnout that I ended up going with. At my local store, Roundhouse South Trains, Tony had a few of these two-pack sets in stock. He had a two-pack of Southern Pacific cars, a baggage, and a coach, a two-pack of American Freedom cars, a baggage, and a coach, and another two-pack of American Freedom cars, a coach, and a diner. And this is what forms the consist. It might look a little goofy, but you could somewhat consider this prototypical as in the 70s, a GS4 was brought out and done up as the American Freedom Train. So it might not have run in this exact configuration with Southern Pacific cars. But I, I really like it. It kind of adds some variety. It really looks like a modern day excursion train that you would see. Because a lot of the cars that you see on those excursion trains, none of them really match. So I kind of like the way that this turned out. These are beautiful, typical MTH Premier cars. 18 inches long, some good looking cars, got figures in them, all kinds of good stuff, some really nice lighting. I think it worked out pretty well. But anyways guys, enough babbling already. What do you say we go ahead and take this thing for a spin around the layout? We're going to be using its extended sound sequences throughout the video. Let's go ahead and fire it up. Before we do fire it up, I do want to add one more thing. I do really like the sound system in this engine. It seems a little updated compared to the others. It has a really nice deep sound to it, for an MTH engine at least. I think it's quite nice. Let's fire her up. We've got a schedule to keep. Let's get our steam. Check on that water level, will you? Swing that spot over. Here's the whistle. The bell. This one also sports a quillable whistle, which can be triggered with the SPW soft key on the remote. It is kind of a goofy uh, quilling whistle for this engine. It doesn't really sound like or match the standard whistle that this engine has. Let's go ahead and move her out.
Have a nice day.
I hope you enjoyed this quick peek at the MTH Premier Southern Pacific Daylight GS4 steam engine. I'm sorry it took so long. <laughs> really is quite the engine though, isn't it? If you did enjoy this video, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It would be much appreciated. But anyways guys, until next time, my name is Zach, and this is Country Bunkers Trains. Y'all take care. I'll see you the next go-around.